You drew the short straw today because Father Skip is not preaching, it's me. <laughs> I'll be shorter. <laughs> Good morning, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there joining us here in person and those who are with us streaming. You notice that when someone comes and asks you for something or tells you they need help or they need a favor, Often our response can be based on how they presented their request or the manner in which they asked. Were they impatient or demanding with their request? And how was their body language or their demeanor? This can have, have an effect on the way we receive a request. And I might even say a prayer being offered and received. Looking back on the gospel, we read about the reaction of the apostles with regards to the situation on the boat. Jesus seemingly just reclining, taking a nap in, in all that's going on, and he doesn't seem to care about their dire situation. Now let's stop and reflect and think about our own prayer life and our communications with the Lord. And hopefully we're, we're reverent when we come to the Lord in prayer, coming to him with a sincere and a grateful heart, thanking him for our blessings. And it's there that we place our needs before the Lord. And we can find this in the New Testament in the letter to the Philippians by St. Paul, chapter, uh, verse, chapter four, verse six and seven, where Paul tells the people of Philippi to have no anxiety at all. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Now that's good directions, isn't it? It's sound advice. Sometimes our prayers to God might sound like, Dear Jesus, help my child, my son or daughter, get into the college that they hope for. Gracious God, you know I lost my job. Please help me find another one. Lord, please help heal my sick parent. But one of the things that today's gospel shows us is that this kind of respectful, reverent prayer is not the only kind of prayer. Jesus and his disciples are crossing the Sea of Galilee and a huge storm comes up and the boat is tossed. From wave to wave, water's crashing over the side, filling up the boat. And it's become apparent to the apostles that this boat is going to sink with everyone in it. And at the same time, Jesus is asleep in the stern of the boat, laying on a cushion. So what do the apostles do? Do they quietly walk over to Jesus and tap him on the shoulder and and say, Lord, I know you're sleeping, but we seem to have a big problem here. Do they gently walk over and shake his shoulder a little bit and say, Master, sorry to disturb you, but the waves are getting really rough? No, they don't do either of those things. They actually cry out in accusation, accusatory. Master, do you not care that we're about to perish? Now, Jesus could respond in a couple different ways, but Jesus is Jesus, right? He gets up and he stills the waters. He calms the sea. But right now, I don't want to talk about what Jesus did. I want to reflect on the apostles and their reaction and their crying out in their prayer. You know, sometimes the best prayers are those which are blunt and seemingly maybe a little irreverent. The best prayers are those that express what we really feel. And sometimes what we feel, my brothers and sisters, is not always polite. We have many examples of this kind of prayer in the Old Testament. And we read through the book of Psalms, the prayer book of the Jewish people. And time and time again, we hear the Psalms attack God in a, for his seeming uh, lack of care. Where the people cry out, why, O oh Lord, do you stand so far away from me? 
Or how long, Lord, will you ignore my prayer? And of course, the prayer Jesus made from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, when the Jewish people prayed, they asked for what they needed. They weren't afraid to demand from God an answer when it seemed like what they needed had been forgotten. You and I need to be able to pray this way. And we can pray with this kind of strength and emotion because we must pray as the people that we were created to be. To be in relationship with God, to be intimate with God. We all know in our family, sometimes we're angry, sometimes we're disappointed. And if we're angry, it's valid to express that anger when we pray to God, to let him know. If we're fearful, that fear should not be held back from what we say. And if we're disappointed with what God is doing in our life, it's okay to express that disappointment when we address God in prayer. It might seem to be preferable to put our best foot forward, to be reverent and quiet when we speak to God, but I think it's more important for us to be sincere and honest than it is to be just polite. The only person God can love, the only person God can answer is the real person that he created. I think it's much better to pray as a real sinner than to try and pass ourselves off as fake saints. Although we might think that emotion and accusation are out of order when we address our God, such emotion and honesty is a sign, is not a sign of disrespect. It's a sign of intimacy. You know, in our daily lives, we go about our, our, our day and our journey and we're polite to strangers we don't know. But then we can be brutally honest with the people that are closest to us, with the people with whom we live. Just remember for a moment the kind of language we use with one another in our own homes. This is for you dads, because I'm sure you've all said these things to your kids. You did what? Where the heck have you been? Don't ever try that again. What were you thinking? We can speak with this kind of honesty because we're close, we're family. Now generally we don't waste our emotions on people that we don't know or we don't have a relationship with. But we can be painfully honest with the people on whom our survival depends the people we call family and friends. God wants us to speak in prayer as family. God wants us to speak what we truly feel because it's a sign of being connected, of being in relationship. We should pray sincerely, honestly, and intimately. So when we're angry, when we're upset, when we're disappointed, it's important to tell God how we feel. When life dumps on us one more time, it's okay to ask God, what the heck is going on? What did I do to deserve this? We don't need to worry about God's feelings because God can handle anything. He's big enough. God wants to speak to us as sons and daughters. He wants us to be close enough to speak the truth, to bluntly cry out in our need. And we need to tell God what's in our heart, both when it's pleasing and when it's not. Because it's only after we tell God how we truly feel that we will be able to hear the answer that God gives.